Indian's black night. There was no way I could make my wrongs right. Then the old accuser to the Lord he did cry. He is a sinner and now he must die. Then I heard a voice say, Father, I'll go and I'll pay his sin debt with Calvary's flow. I'll bear in my body the marks of the cross to save this child who is sin sick and lost and it's still the blood that saves from sin it's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea it is still the blood of jesus that brings victory to me. There are those who rely on the words that they do. Some men count on all the times they pray through. Oh, but when the battle's over and the victory's been won, I'll go home through the blood of God's only Son. And it's still the blood that saves from sin. It's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea. It is still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. And it's still the blood that saves from sin. It's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea. It is still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. I don't ever want to get behind on my thanks to the Lord. He's been so good to me. So good to me in my life. It's been requested we sing this song and you might think, well, what's that got to do with the blood and what we've been singing about? What else we got to be thankful for but the blood? I mean, the, the blood of Jesus. I was sitting, I had to eat breakfast outside this morning. I just took my plate out there on the back deck. Y'all bear with me just a minute. I've got to praise the Lord. And I was sitting there and thinking, boy, this is just a perfect morning. Beautiful sunrise, beautiful weather, beautiful place just to sit there and look out while I eat. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything is perfect in this, in God's creation, in his eyes, you know. He even gave his perfect lamb for our sacrifice so we wouldn't have to go to hell. That's, that's what's been so perfect. And that, that's just a, a profound thought to me come this morning. Now, y'all might not get that, but it just, it just floored me. Lord, thank you. I never want to get behind on my thanks to you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. <laughs> Go ahead. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire and darkest nights You are closer like no other 
I've known you as a father I've known you as my friend And I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close to like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as my friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. you Lord for your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God Of the goodness of God, God is so good. Every help me out here. God is so. Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing of, of the goodness, goodness of God. God. Yes, amen. It has been good. That's all. Verse number seven. <clears throat> if you abide me in my words, abide in you, shall ask what you will, it shall be done to you. Here is my Father glorified, so you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. The Father's loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. These things have I spoken to you, my, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. And... Uh, I want to skip on down to verse number 19 and read that and, uh, for the sake of time and say a word here about that. Verse 19, if you are of the world, the world would love its own. 
But because you're not of the world, but I've shown you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And a minute I'm going to take a text from verse number 11 and preach a little bit about that. But we'll say something about verse 19. In that one verse, it mentions the world five times. And it talks about the Lord, uh, He's chosen us out of the world. Now listen, we're in the world physically today, living down here, but we're not of the world. Right. And uh, I'm just so thankful for that. We're in the world, but we're not of Amen. this world. Right. And I'm proud to tell you today that I'm not of this world. Amen. I'm not interested in what the world has. I'm right. interested in what God has for me. Amen. And but verse number 11, I believe it is. He said that these things... Uh, I've spoken unto you what thing? He's talking about the true vine, the branches, and abiding in the vine to bring forth fruit and things like that. Yep. He said, I've spoken this unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Amen. Now, he talks about uh, my joy and your joy. Yep. And... Uh, I want to show you something if I can here. And uh, when the Lord saves us, He puts uh, His joy in our heart. Yeah. The joy that we don't have to die without God. The joy, He'll be with us all the way. Yeah. And the joy will go to heaven when this short life's over. Yeah. That joy will always remain in a Christian. But the last line said that your joy might be full. Amen. Now if our joy is going to be full, there's something on our part to do about that. Right. But it's God's will for us to be full of joy. Now let me say this. Just about everybody's full of something, I reckon. Well, you think about it. You think about it. I think that's pretty close to right. The Bible talks about being filled with right. The Bible talks about the fool being full of his words. It said the backsliding heart is filled with all of his ways. Jesus told the disciple, because I've said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Right. And then some people are just simply full of the world. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. They're so full of this old world, right. there's no room for God, the Bible, and old time religion in their life. Amen. Amen. And you know that's right. Yes. But I want to preach on why we should be full of joy, why Christians should be full of joy. Amen. Amen. We're saved, thank God. We're born again. We're redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And thank God we ought to be full of the joy of God today. Bible said, therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Weeping men there for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Bible said, the joy of the Lord, your strength. Paul knew what it was to be loved and hated, the sun to shine, the storms to come. But he said, I'm letting all these things move me. That I might finish my course with joy. Yep. Jesus said, you now therefore have sorrow. But he said, I'll see you again, your heart rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Yep. So I'm talking, let me give you a few things here today, right fast like why we should be full of joy. Now you say, preacher, we're living a different age. We're, we're not back in the 40s and 50s. We're, we're not even living in the 60s and 70s. We're, we're on up the ladder farther now. I know, but we're serving the same God. Yeah. There you go. Now you listen to this old preacher, I'm telling you the truth right here. Right. 
Even these perilous times, the last days we're living in, people's cold and callous. Not, a lot of people don't have a heart for God anymore. But I want to tell you, if you so desire and want to, there's still joy unspeakable and full of glory for you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You say you believe that just as much as I'm in this building. Amen. If I don't have joy, I can't blame you. Right. I'm not blaming nobody if I don't have joy. It's my, my personal problem. It's because of me. It's because of me. It's because of the one I shave every morning. If I don't have joy, it's certainly not you. God's fixed it where we can have that joy. The first thing I ought to say, we ought to have be full of joy because the sin debt has been paid in full, thank God. You didn't get that, did you? The sin debt has been paid in full. All the debt I couldn't pay, he paid a debt he didn't know. Yes, sir. The death sentence was passed upon all of us. The wages of sin is death. But it said, we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than angels. For the suffering of death, crime, and glory, and honor, that he by the grace of God should do what? Taste death for every man. He took my place on Calvary. Thank God he, Jesus, signed my part of this I truly know. Took my place at Calvary. Now I don't have to go. And that ought to fill my heart with joy today. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. The Bible said, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Yep. Even the forgiveness of sin is singing about that blood this morning. Keep on singing about it. Amen. Amen. I like it. It'll get the job done. Yes, sir. Amen. Some people can sing. If you, if you shout, if you talk about mamas teaching angels how to sing, I don't know why they can't shout when you sing about the blood. Amen. Amen. I thought I'd throw that in. Amen. Amen. I want to say, well, to be full of joy. Yeah. Jesus paid it all, thank God. Thank I said he paid it all. Yeah. Thank God. John was baptized, looked out across the plains, and he said, behold the Lamb of God. That does what? Takes away the sin of the world. Amen. He was manifest to take away our sin. And in him is no sin. Do you remember before you got saved? That condemnation on your soul. On your soul. I, I remember a time when I was afraid to go to sleep and afraid to get up. I was scared to death. I was under the Holy Ghost conviction. Thank God Jesus passed by one day and took care of all that for me. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven, old count was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top, many things below, but I went to the keeper and got it set long ago. Woo, hallelujah, praise God. And because of that, I'll be full of joy of the Lord today. Not my works, not what I can do, but what he's already done, hallelujah. I'm talking about that being paid in full. Now, let me show you this right quick. Uh, back on the law, the, the, the priest would offer that sin, uh, offer an offering for the sins of the people. And, but there had to be a remembrance again the next year of that same sin. They had to bring another offering for that same sin again next year. What it was, that offer never did take away sin. It just covered it for a year at a time. You get that? You understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But his manifest to take away our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Take it away. Yeah. Yeah. Take it away. So when he died on Calvary, the sin that his paid in full. I. You know, uh, I went and borrowed some money. A long time ago, I used to borrow a lot of money. But then I go down a lot of time to borrow money on a, just a six, uh, a six month note, something like that. And uh, 
If I didn't have the money to pay it, and sometimes I didn't, I'd go down there and renew it. I'm fixing to show you something now. I'm not jumping the track. I'd go down there and renew it. What I'd do if I didn't have money, I'd just pay the interest on it, and they'd renew it for another six months. But I didn't pay a thing on the debt. I'd just give them the interest money. I didn't pay nothing on the debt. That's kind of the way it was back in the law. That's right. It didn't, didn't do nothing. With, it didn't take the sin away. Just covered it for a year at a time. Yeah. I was covered for six more months. None of us could do again. Amen. Right. Yeah. But hallelujah. I'm proud when Jesus came. Not only did he cover our sin, but thank God he took our sins away. Yeah. Never to be remembered against us anymore. And if that don't put a shout in, and yet your shadows tore up. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. This man, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sit down on the right hand of the throne of God. Yes. Right. yes. Don't have to offer no more offerings for right. sin. Amen. Right. And got it offered. It's all finished. It's all took care of. It's all yeah. took care of. You buy something on credit. Most poor folks do. Yeah. And uh, when you get old and ain't got no money, you quit buying on the credit. That's the only time you quit, I reckon. <laughs> you ain't got no money to pay it, so you yeah. can't buy no credit. That's, that's a good thing in a way. That's a blessing. Yeah. But uh, what I started to say, you buy, you buy a truck or a car, get a payment book so big it won't hardly fit in the dash. <laughs> Amen. And especially if you get a new house for 30 years. Yeah. It won't fit in the day. You won't go in the trunk. But I said, oh, I'd say this. It's a blessed day. It's a blessed day when you work hard and pay and pay all, on all that. And then uh, when you go down there and that last little old coupon that book. Yeah. And you lay her up on the desk uh -huh. and you pay that and they'll take that stamp stamp on that last and paid in full that's the one you want to keep right there paid in full well I want to say thank God when Jesus went to Calvary he paid the sin debt in full never to be remembered against us anymore we'll never get a statement about that hallelujah I got to go, and I won't spend all my time on the first point, but I got to. It's yeah. almost time to quit. <laughs> but uh, want to be full of joy because sin has been. Then want to be full of joy because of the privilege of prayer. And they've talked about that here this morning. And I appreciate all these good testimonies talking about prayer, what God's done. Prayer still works, and prayer does still work. In the text I read, it said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's a promise from God. Amen. I like to pray it. I'm proud of the Lord fixed it before we can pray. And, uh, Three things about prayer. He said, one time he said, ask right here. And then the Bible said, call unto me. Jeremiah said, call unto me. And I'll answer thee and show the great and mighty things thou knowest not. And then this Bible says to cry to the Lord. Right. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Amen. Now it's good to ask. Yes. But I'll tell you if you holler, you say the Lord ain't hard to hear and I know it, but he's not nervous either. He don't care for me praying loud. <laughs> You're right. Hurry. Ain't nothing wrong praying loud. Hurry. That Bible said, call. Right. Call. Right. If I was in here, I mean, if I was in here and I was in distress and I was in trouble and I needed help, you were out in the yard, you think I'd just sit on that bench? I was wanting Steve, I'd sit on that bench. Steve, come help me, Steve. Some people think it's a sin to raise your voice, right? I might not go that far, but I like to pray loud. Amen. If you don't, I don't care. But I just like to pray loud. Pray, call. Pray, yep. Yes. If you don't answer, call again. Yeah, that's right. Keep on calling. Amen. 
If you don't get an answer, start crying. Try that. That'll work. That's right. Cry. Cry. He'll hear an answer of prayer. Amen. So I'm proud the Lord fixed it before we can pray. Yes. And they sing a song, I believe it is, Oh, what a friend he is to me, or something like that. It's got that in there somewhere. And I want to say he's been a friend to me. Amen. Oh, Lord, how mercy he's been a friend to me. I never have got an answering machine when I call him. Amen. Amen. That makes me half mad to get an answering machine anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have much patience. If you ever notice when I call you, uh -huh. if you don't answer, yeah. I don't leave no message. You sure don't. I don't like talking machines. I like talking people. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. If I don't get an answer, I just hang up. Thank God I'm proud of the Lord. When I'm in distress, when I've got a need, and I need the Lord more than anything in all the world, sometimes you don't have time to say, dear Heavenly Father, you just have to say, help the Lord. Amen. Help the Lord. That's what I said over the song. And I'm proud he's there. He's there. And he fixed it for anybody can pray. Anybody don't... May come a time I can't walk, but I can pray. Yeah. I can't talk, but I can pray. Right. Might not see, but I can pray. Might not hear, but I can pray. Yeah. May come a time I can't preach, but I can pray. I can't imagine living without preaching. That's right. I know thousands of preachers for me has had to. I mean, you got a place where they weren't able to preach. I can't hardly imagine that. It'd be an awful thing again. But it may come that day. But if it does, I can still pray. But come a day I can't go to church, but and still pray. Have you ever thought yes, about sir. things like this? Have you yeah. has, has ever read so don't you a lot of things this nearly everything it might come a time you can't do it no more. Right. But you can always pray. Amen. Amen. Always pray, doesn't matter what the circumstance may be around you. Amen. Always pray. I gotta go on. So I want to be full of joy because Sin that's been paid in full. Then because we'll have the privilege to pray and talk to God. And then we'll be full of joy because of the presence of God. Yes. 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 Oh, Lord. And I ought to say this to you today. I, I love this church, and I think everybody knows that, and most of y'all love the guests. You tend here anyway. I reckon you love the church. But and I love this place and, and around here. And I thank God for the grounds, and I thank God for the buildings, and I thank God for all the work that's let's get done, and fix everything up around here, and beautify the place of house of God, and, and the church property and everything like that, and I believe it ought to be that way, and I thank God for letting us do that, and getting things doing good, and our offer has just been how this world unheard of, nearly all the work we've done on the church, and the finances have been good, and, and uh, uh, the attendance has been pretty good, well, when I talk to other preachers around, uh, I guess it's been real good, to be honest about it, <laughs> since the sickness came in. And God's been so good to us. I said all that to say this. I love all this, and I appreciate all of it, and appreciate all y'all. But you know what's the most precious thing around here? Yes, sir, is the presence of God. Amen. 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 The most precious thing this side of heaven is the presence of God. You know, have all the buildings and the people and the land and, and uh, everything you might want. If God's not there, you still don't have much. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 Want to be full of joy because of the presence of God. Yes, sir. Lord help us. Right there. I thought about Moses. And the Bible said that he is a over, he went all the way across the desert. He's taking care of his father-in-law's flock. Went all the way across the desert. But thank God he finally came to the Mount of God. I looked at the other day and it said he came to the Mount of God. And the uh, Lord set that bush on fire. And, uh -huh. and Moses said, I'm going to turn over and see what that is. So he went over and he got almost over there. And the Lord said, Moses, said you better pull your shoes off. The ground you're standing on is holy ground. Yeah. Amen. 
I'll tell you, I love to get on that ground where it feels like it's just about time to pull your shoes off. I mean, you, I mean that holy ground. I, whoo, hallelujah, praise God. I tell you, there's nothing like it, amen. Now to say you don't have to be in the church house, it's a good place, but you don't have to be in the church house. I've got on the holy ground yeah. over in my house. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got on holy ground going down the road in the car, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a truck, whatever. Right. Just any time you meet with God, you're getting on holy ground. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen, sir. Hey, want to be full of joy because of that. Yes, sir. I remember again Joshua, the, and they was going out. Israel was going to war the next day, and, and uh, he went down that night to check things out, see how things go. He saw a man standing by the wall over there, had his sword out. Joshua said, "I want to ask you one thing: Are you on our side, or the enemy's side?" He said, "No, I come down here to be captain of the Lord's host." That's right. And the same thing he said to Joshua. Joshua. You better pull your shoe off. The ground you're standing on is holy ground. Amen. I left to get on holy ground. That's and you right. know what he told Moses, what he told Joshua? Told Moses to pull his shoes off. Told Joshua to pull his shoe off. What? Shoe. A lot of folks think, and I don't know the Bible will tell us it, but a lot of folks think that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, uh, Joshua might have lost a leg. In the war, he was a warrior. He fought the battle. And I don't know, but, but yeah. that's why you look at your Bible, see if I ain't telling you right. Told Moses to pull his shoes off, told Joshua to pull his shoe off. But in the end, it's getting on holy ground. Mm -hmm. I like getting on holy ground. Right. Lord, I could, I could preach long and you'd want to hear me on this, but I, I won't. I'll, I'll say this. I thought about Jacob. And he'd done his brother wrong. He saw wrong. He's afraid to face him. He's going to have to face him. He's afraid he'd kill him. He's afraid of his brother. Yeah. And he went over there and it's on a journey. He laid down to go to sleep that night and got a rock for a pillow. And lay down and went to sleep. And he had a vision, dreamed a dream. And the Bible said there's a ladder set upon the earth, and the end of it reached all the way to him. Right. And Jacob watched them angels go up and down that ladder at night. In that vision. And he woke up. And you know what he said when he woke up? Joshua said. Truly or surely. The Lord. Is in this place. Right. He said this is none other. Than the house of the Lord. Amen. And them holy grounds. Them holy ground. Elijah. Got on holy ground. Paul got on holy ground. Right. And uh, after it had that shipwreck and on and on. So many things can be said about that. I just want to say one thing about Psalms 23. And on down toward the last of it. it said he prepared the table before him in the presence of the enemy. And my head with oil and said my cup run the fall. Three things he said right there. And I believe when we get on holy grounds and get close to God, them three things happen. First of all, he said, he prepares the table before me. When God's around that table spread. Yep. Right, right. And he said, he anoints my head with oil. Yeah. And he's around, the anointing of God's around. Right. And uh, then he said, my cup runs over. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That cup will start running over when you get in the presence of God. So many things will be said, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. But uh, we sang that little song. There are days I'd like to be all along with Christ my Lord. Yeah. And uh, I love to get along with the Lord, don't you? Amen. Don't do it much as I ought to, but I love to when I can. Then we ought to be full of joy because the promise is coming back again. It may be gloomy for some of you today. I don't know. I don't know what you face in life. I don't know how it is and what it is. But I do know one thing. One day after a while, that gloom is going to turn into gladness. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord's coming. He said, I'm going to power play. And if I do, I'll come again. Yes. So he we went away. He's coming back again. And probably 
It won't be long. Right. Yet a little while neither shall come, will come, will not tarry. Right. Beloved, now we the sons of God don't appear what will be, but we know when he shall appear we'll be like him, for we see him as he is. Amen. This is the last thing. We're going to be full of joy because there's going to be a payday. Amen. Wife used to like this song better than him. Better than him. Payday at the end of the road. Payday at the end of the road. I guess preachers' wives just glad they are paid at the end of the road. Preachers all the time getting recognized, stand up in front of everybody all the time. Let me tell you this. This, uh, you may feel like you've been overlooked in life. Anybody, I just want to ask you, don't raise your hand, but does anybody ever feel like you kind of been shortchanged sometime? You didn't really get what's coming to you. Yeah, I tell them, look at everyone up here. All of us sometimes in our lives, if nothing else, we feel sorry for ourselves every once in a while. And uh, think we got shortchanged about people. Yeah, amen. But it's hard to say this preacher, well-known preacher, and he went, preached this from meeting. Pastor, get up there and say something good about him every night and brag on him, turned over to him and preach. Brag on him the next night and turned over to preach. And there's a lady sitting about three benches from the back back there, and she'd come every night. I believe it's on Thursday night. Pastor went back there and shook hands with her and said, Ma'am, we're glad to have you with us. I believe you've been here right now. I don't reckon I know you. She said, I'm the unknown wife of that well known husband. Amen. Preacher. Unknown wife of that well known preacher. I guess that's the case sometimes. Amen. But there's going to be a payday at the end of the road. Right. For everybody, payday's coming. He said, Behold, I come quickly, my reward's with me to give every man according, as his work shall be. Paul said, I'm not ready to be offered. He said, To be steadfast and unmovable. All these many things. I'll, I'll quit right there. But there are some reasons we ought to be full of joy. Now, when I'm talking about full of joy, I ain't talking about you get up every morning, get out of bed, jumping up and down, shouting because you get to go to work. You don't do that. That's not nature. That's not, people don't do that. I'm just talking about if things are up or things are down. If you got money in the bank or you're about broke. I'm talking about that real joy down there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, of the Lord can give you. Yeah. Real thing. The real thing. Amen. And I ought to say because these things are preached about along with many other things, I believe real Christians ought to be full of joy. Amen. Right. And uh, shout when you can, when you can't live by faith. Right. Right. And just love the Lord and serve Him. Amen. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for letting us be here today and and I know I've not to, probably done justice. I just done what I could and skipped around a little. But I pray the Holy Ghost will take and be a blessing to somebody. Somebody, I pray somebody will get something today. But I do thank you for your presence. It's been so sweet and real and wonderful with us today. All the good saying, all the good testimonies, and all the people bragging on God and praising God. And I know you're worthy. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. So thankful that we've had the privilege to get in on it, get in on the blessings and be here, be in the house of God, be with people again. What a blessing. I pray you'd help us, Lord. If there's people here today lost that joy, don't have the joy no more. Oh, God, I pray you'd help them that uh, they'll get right with God, get their heart right. And the needs in this building, I pray you'll meet according to your will. If there's one sinner, you'd speak to their heart about salvation and see the need of the Lord. They get saved, and we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's sing two verses.